If you're ready to learn a little bit more about Coda, you've come to the right place. Coda is a really cool software that has the look and feel of a Google Doc, but the deep functionality of a relational database. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and we're gonna go into detail on how to get set up using Coda. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to get organized and automated with relational databases and automated services. So if that's of interest to you, swing by our website, check out all the resources that we've put together and see how we can help you unlock new potential as you move forward with your business. But without further ado, let's get into what exactly Coda is. Let's start off with pricing, because this is always important when you jump into any new software, you want to know what you're going to be spending upfront. So here, jumping into my screen, you'll see that I am on Coda's new payment plan page. And the really cool thing about Coda is that the only people that you pay for who are using Coda are the people who have the power to create docs. So anybody who you've shared your database with or you shared your doc with, they are not actually going to be getting uh, you know, charged or you're not going to get charged for them having access. That's really, really cool because most softwares like this are going to charge you for everybody, every user. So that's you know a really great thing. So only those people with like that admin level, that creator privilege are gonna be charged. And currently I believe that that's about $30 per month as it says here. So definitely uh, you know going into Coda, go in with eyes wide open, it's gonna run you about 30 bucks a month for everybody who has creator or you know maker privilege as they call it in Coda. All right, so that being said, what exactly is Coda? Well, it has the look and feel of Google Docs but it has the power of a relational database. And I'll show you exactly what it looks like by jumping into a goal tracker. Here we are at the time of this filming, at the beginning of the year, time where people are sitting down and setting up a lot of goals for the upcoming year. So figured what an appropriate way to get started. But you'll see that you've got all of these different docs and you can uh, go into Coda. They have a whole library of templates so you can go and see what other people have built and made available to the public. Or you can just create a new doc from scratch. You can import something from Excel, from Trello, from Google Docs, you have all these capabilities, or you can just hit that plus button over here and just start working from scratch, which is exactly what I did when I built this goal tracker uh, myself. So let's jump into this doc real quick and, uh, and take a look at how it works. So once it loads, you'll see that here on the left-hand side, we've got almost like a little table of contents that takes us to different spots in the doc. And each one of these is gonna open up, um, you know, essentially like its own page. And it really has the look and feel of an app that you can customize as, uh, as you go setting it up. But it, you know, it basically functions like a Google Doc. But, and again, this is the fun part. This is where it gets like to be just incredibly powerful tool these, you know, one of these uh, sections, I built tables. And so if I were to just create, let's say a new uh, section here, you see that I can create folders or sections. Folders are great ways to help organize this stuff. So I've actually built two folders, one for the workflow and a second one for the data. So essentially what I'm saying is, hey, I've got a bunch of different tables and I wanna set them up on my, uh, my data place. And this isn't a part that I'm gonna make available to everyone. So maybe I hide this when I publish this doc and share it with my team. Uh, and so I can do that, and then they're only gonna be using the workflow situation. And I'll walk through how I built this in just a moment. But when you add a new section, let's just suppose we wanted to add a new section here, you can see that you can add icons, you have a bunch of different options here in terms of how you want it to be aligned, etc. And then you can automatically bring in so many things. You can uh, sync it to pull in external data. You can start setting up tables to organize your data. You can build views, which uh, give you nice, uh, quick ways to look at your data just to get some visualization. Uh, you can add a to-do list, topic voting, and then of course, as I mentioned earlier, just jump into some templates. So stuff that people have already built, you can just you know bring right into your setup. So, but I've already set this up in a way that I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and, uh, and get rid of that for now. And we're gonna be talking about what we're setting up here. So the scenario that I'm approaching is I'm saying, hey, look, we're setting up some goals. And every goal that we have 
is going to be attached to tasks, more than one task in most cases. So let's say, for example, we have a goal that is uh, we want to grow a new team member. Well, we're going to have tasks that are related to that goal. And we're going to, you know, maybe we want to lose some weight. So this is like a personal fitness goal. Well, then we're going to have some tasks that are associated with that as well. And so first, we, the first table we created here is our goals table. And then we created a categories table. So you'll see that each goal has its own category. And, uh, and so in order to get that little drop down, we need to have a table of categories as well. So far, I've only got a professional and a personal health goal or category. And then we get into the tasks, right? And so again, the tasks have their own unique data and then they connect to our goals. So a task is linked to a goal and then we have progress of that, uh, of that, of that particular task and also a date that it's due and a date that it's completed. Now, the cool thing about this date completed is you see it actually fills out automatically because it's a formula. So I've said, hey, when basically I wrote a formula here, which I'm happy to share. And it basically says, hey, when progress reaches 100, that's when I want this to fill out with the date that it was brought up to 100 percent. So we can simply say, hey, when I bring that up to 100, then all of, all of a sudden that populates. And that's a really cool, you know, formula use case. But let's talk about the formulas and how we write them. Uh, similarly here, we have, you know, in our goals, the, our goals are connected to our tasks. And that's something that we set up by first connecting them here. And so we go into formatting the column and we can uh, make it a lookup type of data, which means that this is going to connect to or link to another table. And then once we have that, then we can bring in the reciprocal of that relationship. So if a task is connected to a goal, then a goal is connected to a task. And then we have access to all of the different data that lives inside of these tasks. So for example, we can tell what the progress is uh, for each of these tasks, and we're summing that here. So you can see that if I were to make these adjustments here, let's say I increase this task and said that that was 100% complete. Well, then now I have current progress at 200. And so again, using some formulas, I'm able to look at the tasks that are connected to these goals and to add up the amount that exists in that progress. And then I can also, of course, and in a similar way, count the number of tasks that, uh, that are connected to that as well. Using that, I can do some, some more formulas that give me a percent complete. So for example, I know I'm connected to three tasks, which would be out of 300, and I have current progress of 200, so we would know that that is 67%. So we wrote a formula that basically looks at those two fields or columns and does that math itself. Now, if you wanted to boil this down even simpler, and this is where Coda really shines, its formulas are so robust that I can actually write one formula that does all of that work where I don't need all of these different pieces. Now, I kept them here for the sake of simplicity, just so that we could see how this worked. But this formula here by itself is actually working uh, without the help of all these other formulas. So I could eliminate them and still have all this functionality. Okay, so once we set up our data, which we've done in these different tables, now let's talk about the workflow. And this is where Coda gets really fun because we can add things like buttons, which I've done here, so that when we click on this, action happens inside of our our uh, Coda document. And so here we're able to see all of the different categories. We have personal health and professional. Well, let's say we wanted to add one. Let's say we wanted to add family. All I need to do is click that button that we've set up. And now as soon as I'm out of here, there's a new category for family. Similarly, we are tracking two goals. We have the, you know, this one professional goal, this one personal health goal. Let's say we have um, a family goal where we want to have dinner at the dinner table <laughs> one at least one night a week there we go so now we can go ahead and set up the category that that's associated with that's a family goal and we can jump out of here and now we see that all nicely put in right here so this is a nice easy way for us to see our current uh, you know setup and then also add things and adjust and modify on the fly once we're set there, let's go ahead and review and update the tasks. This is another place where Coda really shines. It gives us the ability to 
essentially build our own UI, user interface, inside of the dock. So here I've done what we call a control, and I can add this control so that when I drop down from this drop down box, and I can then look at the tasks that are associated just with that. So inside of my UI, inside of my dock, I can adjust this. So let's say I wanted to see what tasks are associated with our new goal. Once I make that selection, these are filtered, and of course we don't have any of those tasks yet, so let's add some. I'm going to go ahead and click the button, and the nice thing here is you'll see that it's already filled out with the goal that we are working on right now. Right? I don't want to adjust that, so I'll keep it there. And let's give it a name. Uh, so this is January um, uh, task for eating, for dinner. And what's the, or what's the actual task? Well, let's say that we, if we're going to do it once a week, then let's say uh, we have to have it, have dinner as a family four times. Great. So I can go ahead and set the date due and that's due in January. So we're gonna have to review it in Jan at the end of January. And so then as the month progresses, we can say, well, okay, we had, uh, we had dinner once. So that's 25% complete. We had dinner as a family twice. You get the idea. I realize this is a, you know, a ridiculous example, but uh, it kind of shows off what we're doing. All right, then we can review the categories. Here we've got a nice little uh, graph that came together in a second just by uh, you know saying, hey, we want to look at the different goals by category. And because we built the structure on the back end, all of this filters out really quickly. We can also go to a goal dashboard and it'll show us how we're doing in terms of reaching our goal in terms of overall percentage. Now, remember, if I drop back into our tables here, we already built these formulas. And so really all we're doing is graphing the outputs from these formulas. And so if we're looking at having dinner um, one night a week with our family, and then we look at, at this, you know, we're saying, hey, this is 50% complete. We have one task and it's marked at 50. If that, uh, that task were upgraded, so again, let's go back to our review and update. Let's say we met our goal for the uh, month of January, then when we go to our goal dashboard, we're gonna see this at 100%. It's you know completely filled up. So anyhow, I realize that there's a lot to cover in Coda. So we'll definitely be doing a lot more videos that go specific or go into more detail on the specifics of the uh, overall software. But I hope that this was a great intro to kind of get your interest peaked and to show you what's capable in this awesome software. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.